All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 1 this morning, or tonight, or whatever it is. Amen. All three of those young ladies come up here to tell me that one of them want to get baptized. That's good. Amen. And we're going to talk to the parents and make sure it's okay, and that'll be great. Amen. I believe that love produces obedience. When somebody loves you, and you realize they love you, then you want to obey. God so loved the world uh, he gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that, therefore we ought to obey and submit and be uh, uh, faithful to the Lord and submitted and yielded as a vessel. And I want you to, I want you to uh, bear with me because the Lord just gave me this message about 5 o'clock so I, don't, I might not be able to read my notes but uh, I've jotted down a lot of scripture and I'm going to read them. And I want to uh, preach a message entitled, The Trinity in Christmas. The Trinity in Christmas. I feel sorry for cults, uh, Jehovah Witnesses up the road, the Islamic. None of them believe in the Trinity. And none of them believe that Jesus came and uh, God came in the flesh. And they even say they believe in the Old Testament. They don't believe in the New Testament. So we're going to show you a lot of Old Testament scriptures proving the Trinity. And uh, you can't trace God. You must trust God. And um, you'll see the Trinity in the Christmas story here in Mary's life. Let's stand on to the Word of God in verse 26, Luke chapter 1. It was a great day. We appreciate all that went into it, the decorations, the orchestra, uh, the food, uh, all the gifts. It's going to be great. Now we can go back to the parents and we can just say this. We want you to come again and give. And you say, give what? Give worship. Amen? Because we're worshiping the Lord. Amen? That's why we ought to come, is to worship the Lord. And a lot of times I'll help people uh, in the cupboard, and I'll say, hey, listen, the next time you come, I want you to come and give. And they look at me like, well, I ain't got no money. I said, we don't want you to give worship, because that food is from God. Amen? And that's why we ought to come to church, not just to get a handout on, in the pantry, but to give God the glory. Amen? And so let's, let's work at that. Amen? And there's a lot of people under conviction. I saw a lot of people under conviction. Several people were afraid to uh, move. Uh, one lady in broken English, and I could tell she was very nervous because she's going to say these three words. But she, she looked at me. I was complimenting her daughter's smile that she got from her, and uh, I, I didn't realize she couldn't speak English. And she rehearsed in her mind. She paused, and then she said, Thank you so much. And so in my great Spanish, I was going to respond and say, you are very welcome. And I went blank. So I said, you're welcome. Amen. And, uh, and, they, and she meant that. She was so touched by our love for her daughter. And that's a blessing. All right, let's start with verse 26. It says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. How many believe that? Say amen. amen. Espoused, to a man, uh, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. She never worship her as the mother of God. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Not above women, among women. Don't ever crown her as the mother of God. And when he saw him, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what matter of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name, all caps, Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore also that holy thing which thou shalt be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. I hope you picked up the Trinity in that verse. And I hope he picks you up. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who shall call barren. 
And for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the, hand, behold the handmaid of the Lord. That's another word for servant. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with the, uh, haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and, and um, saluted Elizabeth. It came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. By the way, that wasn't protoplasm. That was a babe that leaped. And she spake out with a loud voice. That's just like a woman in it. No, not really. And said, Blessed art thou among women. He said again, among women. Listen to me, girls. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence, and, and whence is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. And lo, soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And, and bless, blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And then I want you to see three things here. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. And he's regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. You may be seated as we preach a few minutes on the Trinity in the Christmas story. Father, thank you for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit involved in Mary's life. And Lord, bringing you into this world to manifest God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Lord, help us, dear God, to realize how blessed we are to believe that God is God the Father, God the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and God the Son, and all three in one. Lord, we can't explain that. Uh, we never could try, but Lord, we know it's real. We know you're real and that you're one God. And Lord, that you are a uh, triune God and you're all-powerful. And God, all the Trinity is involved in our life. And we thank you for that. And we praise you, dear God, that you came to this earth to manifest all that to us. All of you. And Lord, may all of you be all of you through us. That we may yield our lives, our souls, our spirit to you this morning, this afternoon. And God, may we be a yielded vessel to manifest the Lord Jesus Christ to a lost and dying and skeptical and cynical and unbelieving world. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in these verses that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Jesus, or Mary, and that Jesus was born of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so back in uh, these verses, we see that uh, He said... In verse 32, he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall God give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom shall, shall be no end. And Mary asked how this could be because she had never been with a man. In verse 35, we see the Trinity. And the angel answered and said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So we have God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son. He's all three and three in one. Islams don't believe that. The Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is a created being uh, and that He's just another person or prophet or priest. The Unitarians, they don't believe in the Trinity. And Folks, I want to tell you something. Uh, Jesus said that He'd always been. Even in John 8, 58, if you'll turn there, and we're going to see a lot of Scriptures. This will be more teaching than it is preaching, but we need that. In John 8, 58, the Bible says this. Uh, and It says, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. I am. And so we see the Trinity was in existence. And folks, a lot of times... Um, uh, they wanted to stone him because he said that. And the reason they wanted to stone him, if you'll go back to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, uh, when uh, Moses 
was confronted by the Lord in chapter 3, verse 14 of Exodus. God said, and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou, thou say unto thy children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And so folks, they, they just said, well listen, you're not even 50 years old, verse 57 of John chapter 8. And thou, had, and, and thou hast seen Abraham? And so they wanted to pick up the stones and stone him because in verse 59, they took up stones to cast at him. Because Jesus was saying, I'm God. Jesus was saying, in Abraham's day, I was there and he saw me as the I am. Now folks, that was stoning uh, grounds. They wanted to kill him for blaspheming because he said he was God. Well, I'm going to tell you something. He's, he's more than said that he was God. He is God. And so the Holy Spirit is God. Acts chapter 5, if you'll turn there, you know the story very well. And boy, I'm glad God's uh, not this strict here because folks, it would be half the church buried out back. But Acts chapter 5, and the Bible says in um, verse uh, uh, 1, it says, But a certain man, Ananias and Sapphire, his wife, sold possessions, kept back part of it. Uh, the wife also privately to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, And Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price? What remaineth, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thy own power? Why hast thou conceived uh, this thing into thy heart and has lied, uh, has not lied unto man, but unto God. He calls God the Holy Spirit, God. So, folks, here is the Son of God, the I Am, saying, I'm God. <clears throat> and here's Peter saying, you've lied to the Holy Spirit, and thus you've lied to God. And so, folks, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are three in one. How many believe that? Say amen. It's one of our doctrines, and it's one of our cardinal doctrines. And I want to tell you something. First of all, I want to bring out just three things real quick in this Christmas story. And it really covers the whole Bible, because it is his story. Folks, there's the mystery of the Trinity. The mystery of the Trinity. You can't figure it out. Uh, somebody asked John Wesley said, uh, 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 about the Trinity, and he, said, he replied like this, Can a worm understand a man? And they said, well, I don't guess so. And he says, well, neither can you understand the Trinity. I put that to rest, amen. Folks, we can't figure God. We can't trace God. And by the way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a God I could figure out. I wouldn't want a God on my level. Folks, we worship a trice holy God. We worship a God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. One time John R. Rice was praying and he prayed, uh, Holy Spirit, come, uh, come and be with us. And, and um uh, uh, a lady come up and rebuked him. I would, I would never rebuke John R. Rice, amen, in his day, because he was against everything. But I tell you what, he said, hey, she said, you're not supposed to address God as the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to address Him in prayer as our Father, which art in heaven. He looked at her, put his glasses down on his nose like he used to do. And he said, I want to tell you something, lady. When you get to know God as, uh, as, as close as I am, you can call Him whichever you want to, amen, and just rebuked her, Amen. So don't ever do that. But I'll tell you what, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 is a tremendous verse. Turn there about the Trinity. I'm talking about the Trinity. You say, this is not very exciting. It will be before it's over. Amen. And folks, if you can't get excited about a trice holy God living in you, something's wrong. If you can't get excited about the doctrine of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is, is one, then you, something's wrong. The word Trinity is never mentioned in the Bible, but God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is. Look at 1 Timothy, please, and um, uh, in chapter 3. And pray for me, because I'm very nervous about this, uh, trying to preach on something this, this uh, profound. It says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Somebody say amen right there. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And what's it say? It's the mystery of godliness. It's the mystery of godliness. Folks, logic. You know, there's nothing, uh, that you can talk about a lot of things about logic. You know, God had no beginning. Figure that out. Hey, friend, God's everywhere. If you want to logically try to figure that out, you're going to blow your mind what's left of it. Amen? 
We have no confidence in God that we can understand. He's a God that's above our ways and higher than our thoughts. And thank God, He's God and we're who we are and we ought to do submit. And we ought to be like Mary, even though we can't understand. She offered her body and then she said, My soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit is saved. She offered her body, her soul, and her spirit. Triune being. That's what every one of us are. We're, we're in the likeness of God. We have a spirit, we have a body, and we have, a, we have a, a emotions or a soul. And folks, listen, I thank God for that. But I want you to turn to Isaiah 40, verse 18, and I want you to see uh, what the Bible says about trying to figure God out. Great is the mystery. I want to give you the mystery of the Trinity, and, and it's brought out in the Christmas story. We're in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 30. I know y'all a lot of you are tired. I figure it's too hot in here. It's like throwing a blanket on a Baptist on a Sunday afternoon when the auditorium gets too warm. Amen? You ever get, you ever get real uh, 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 warm? What happens when you're at home? You just fall off to sleep. Amen? So how many are too warm in here? Raise your hand and confess it. All right, several of you are. Okay. Um, we got air circulating everywhere, so I don't know what else we can do. But listen to this. Isaiah 40, verse 18. Look what the Bible says. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will you compare him to? Folks, there's nobody like him. There's nobody like him. He's triune in nature. And folks, that's why the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, turn with me now. We're going to see a lot of verses. Y'all be fast tonight. I mean, turn those Bibles, amen. Flip those channels or whatever you're doing to find the Scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. I believe that's it. I jotted it down hoping and praying that's the verse. Yes, it is. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, uh, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, he said he, he's praying that your whole spirit, soul, and body. Folks, that's exactly what happened to Mary. She offered her body. She didn't understand how the Holy Spirit could uh, 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 conceive a baby in her. She'd never been with man. And God was overshadowed. And then when, he, when she had the baby, it was going to be the Son of God. There's the Trinity wrapped up in Mary's uh, salutation from the angel. And she was thrilled, so much thrilled, that in Luke chapter 2 in our text, it says that uh, in verse 37, it says, And Mary, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. In verse 38, she gave her body. She said, Be it to me. I'm the handmaiden. I'll, be, I'll give my womb as the holies of holies, the tabernacle, God Almighty. That's what she was saying. She didn't say it in those terms, but folks, that's exactly what the Bible says when she says the power of the highest overshadowed thee. That's the same picture of the overshadowing presence of God in the holies of holies. And so her womb became the holies of holies for the Lord Jesus Christ. And she was just a peasant. She was just a, a lady that was broke because they offered turtle doves instead of a lamb on, on the Day of Atonement. She was nothing fancy. She was nothing special. She was the mother of Jesus, not the mother of God. And then she went on and did something else in verse 46 of Luke chapter 2. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Her emotions, her being. And then verse 47 says, And my spirit shall rejoice in God my Savior. There you got it. You got the, you got the body, you got the soul, and you got the spirit. A trichotomy of man. We have three divisions about us. And folks, who does that emulate? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now don't get this mixed up with uh, modalism. What is modalism? Well, modalism's like this. I'm a pastor, I'm a husband, and I'm a father. Folks, that's not a good illustration of the Trinity by any means. That's different modes. That's different relationships. I, I'm just one person. But I want to tell you something, there's three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And folks, I want to tell you something, it's not God acting in three ways. It's not God assuming uh, uh, three different modes or three different responsibilities. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now the cults have a problem with the New Testament, but they always go back to the Old Testament and take things out of context and try to prove that God or Jehovah or 
whoever is their God, but Jesus is not their God. That's a cult. It's a heresy. It's ungodly. It's unthinkable for you to go to a cult. And I want you to see in the Old Testament the Trinity, just for a second. Turn to Genesis 1.1. That's a good place to start. Can somebody say amen? I'm getting cooler already, amen? Praise God. Somebody in those pictures need to lose weight. I don't know who it was, amen? But anyway, Genesis chapter 1.1. You never know how fat you are until you see yourself in a picture, amen? But I I had a good time, amen, holding up those toys, and I felt like Santa Claus. And I tell you what, Caitlin took some good pictures, didn't she? Amen? Those were beautiful. Hey, somebody put that on the internet and tell people that missed this what they missed. Amen? Go ahead and put it on Facebook, brother. Uh, I don't know how to do it, but you can. Praise God. I like to see those smiles, don't you? Well, little old boy, he wouldn't come out of his coat. I tried my best. I said, hey, man, smile. Get out behind that coat. He was so shy. But praise God, he walked off smiling when he had that little old Lego set in his hands. Praise God. Legos will do a wonderful work in your life, won't it? Amen? Until you get it in a vacuum cleaner. But anyway, look at this. Uh, can't stand those things. we got them all over the house. I bought a thousand one time at a yard sale, and I'm telling you, i got Legos everywhere. Amen? Legos coming out of my ears. Oh, my word. Somebody come and get, me, get rid of them. But look at the Genesis 1.1. That sounds like a Scrooge, don't it? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's the Trinity. The word for God is Elohim. And folks, I want to tell you, Elohim means plural. It's plural. It's the plural state with a singular verb. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, you knew I was going to go to the next verse. Genesis 1, verse 26. Hey, y'all might can just win a cult member, Lord, if you'll just jot some of these verses down. Amen. They come to your door knock on their little door and saying Jesus is a created being and there is no hell and uh, Islam is the way and, and Allah is the way. You can just shoot these verses at them, praise God. Amen. Don't back down and sure don't go join it. Oh my, I don't want to even think about that. But look at this. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, you knew I was going there. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the earth, cattle over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Your oneness ought to magnify the Trinity, of, and their, the Trinity is pretty close, amen? Oneness. And God said, let us! Now folks, who's us? Jesus is us. The Holy Spirit is us. And God is us. And folks, when He created man, us was around. Amen. The I Am was there. Jesus is not a created being. God helped the cults. They're wrong. They're dead wrong. And they're going to hell believing something else. You need to believe the Bible. All right, turn to another great verse. Let's go to the New Testament. Job 26, verse 13. Job 26, verse 13. We won't get to the New Testament yet. Job 26, verse 13. You with me? Amen. Everybody here? Job 26, verse 13. I know you're tired, but I got home earlier than I ever got home. Amen. Look at this. It says, By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. His spirit was in creation. His spirit garnished the heavens. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Oh, folks, listen, I'm going to tell you something. We ought to thank God that we have a triune God that we can't figure out. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, go go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I want you to look at verse 4 and 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is is the uh, Shema. This is what the Jews have to quote every morning of their life. This is what they sing every week of their life. This is something they, they this rehearse all over again. And I don't know why in the world uh, they don't believe in the Trinity. Because they don't believe the Messiah's come. Look at this. In Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. The word Lord is Yahweh, Jehovah. And folks, Jehovah is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you're not a Jehovah Witness if you're witnessing for anything but the Trinity. 
We're the Jehovah Witnesses. Will the real Jehovah Witnesses please stand up? That's you. It's not them. They're false witnesses. I was going to be real nice tonight. Our Lord is, a, is, is, is one God in the Old Testament. Our God has a son. The Bible says it in um, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Y'all know the verse, but I'm going to read it anyway. For unto us a child is born. That's good. But listen to this. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. What's it say? The son's given and his name is Mighty God. <laughs> Amen. God's the son. Son's the God. Folks, listen. He's God. Let's just put it down. He's God. Our God has a son. Our God is the son. You see, I'm th thoroughly confused. We'll turn to Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. And this will be the last verse I'll read in the Old Testament, maybe. Look at this. I got hundreds, uh, not hundreds, a few of them. Psalms chapter 2. Boy, that'd be stretching if I said hundreds and I got about six. All right, look at this. Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Psalms 2, 6 and 7 says, Ye he said, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I'll declare the degree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Amen? He said, I'll declare a degree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. In verse 6 he said, I'll set my king upon. <laughs> Praise God, the king is the son. And the son is the king. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You say, I'm bored silly. Well, you don't need to get bored about the Trinity, amen. You need to tune in. Folks, it defines the Trump. It, de it defines the Trinity. Uh, folks, if we deny, if we try to define the Trinity, we'll lose our mind. If we try to deny the Trinity, we'll lose our soul. So there's the mystery of the Trinity. Then second of all, I want to give you the history of the Trinity. The history of the Trinity is that God was in creation, Genesis 1-1. And the Bible says that uh, something about the beginning. Turn to John chapter 1, verse 1. You knew I'd get there sooner or later, didn't you? John chapter 1, verse 1. I don't think we ought to ever apologize for teaching the Word of God, especially these, these doctrines. The Trinity is a great doctrine. It sets us apart from false cults. John 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. But look, look at this. This gets exciting. And the Word was God. The Word is the Logos. The Word is the manifestation. The Word is defined in verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. And the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word's Jesus. And folks, the Bible says, in the beginning, Jesus was with God. And Jesus is God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things are made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Some of the greatest Christmas verses you'll ever read is John 1, 1 through 3. And so, folks, the Trinity is in the creation. I'll say the Trinity is in the, not only the creation, but in the composition of our Bible. I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I like preaching verse by verse, but sometimes you just got to get topical. Amen? So I'll preach either way. It don't matter to me. I had a guy one time in the Bible, in our own Bible college, says, I don't think it's proper to flip from verse to verse. He rebuked my kind of preaching. That was the last time he taught here. Amen? Now he's trying to reclaim the Baptist and try to start over the Baptist, and he's He's uh, in a contemporary movement, and he don't even believe we're Baptists are right, and he's trying to rename Baptists, and he's, he's uh, turning against everything he was raised in. That's sad. That's sad. He should have stayed in that Bible college right there and said, hey, you can flip all the verses you want to, just stay with the Bible. Mm, mm, mm. I shouldn't have said that. Listen, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Just get tired of people denying their heritage, the Word of God. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says this, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And folks, listen, God had a part. It's the inspiration of God. It was God breathed. That's where we get the word inspiration. He breathed upon these men to, to dictate what the Holy Spirit's about to give them. Look, to, look at 1, Timothy, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 now. I want to show you the, Holy, uh, the Trinity in the, in the Christmas story, but I want you to see in the writing of the Bible, in the composition of the Bible. 1, Timothy chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. I didn't have time to type this message up. I'll type it later. It says, Of which salvation prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophets, prophets of the grace that should come unto you. Folks, listen, 1 first, first Peter chapter 1, verse 10 says that, folks, uh, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. And folks, the Bible says, searching what or what matter of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand in suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Oh, folks, the Spirit of God moved upon the prophets who wrote this book. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. For the prophecy came not of old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is in the composition of the Bible. Isn't that wonderful to know that we've got a triune holy God that uh, is giving us the Word of God? And so folks, listen, in the creation, there's the Trinity. In the composition of the Scripture, there's the Trinity. And then as we saw in our text, in the conception of Christ, there's the Trinity. One other thing in closing. I see in the commissioning of the church, there's the Trinity. Turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Y'all know the verses. But the Bible says, And Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit with you always, even to the ends of the world. Folks, let's, let, let's, let me just say this. is the commissioning of the church. The Great Commission is in the, in the Trinity. And last but not least, the saving ministry of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says he'll call his name Jesus. And folks, he's a Savior. He's the Savior, amen? Jesus is the Savior. There's no other Savior. But I want you to see how uh, you're saved. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. We'll close with these scriptures. It'll be the shortest message you've ever had on Sunday night by me. Could let Nathan preach, praise God, and we'll get out of here. Amen. But anyway, amen. It's all right, brother. Don't apologize for being concise. I wish I was. Amen. And every, all God's people said amen. But look at this. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. The Bible says this, Blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You'll never get saved unless you meet Christ, unless you invite Christ, unless you believe in Christ. We're chosen in Him, praise God. That's a wonderful blessing, isn't it? It says, according, He hath chosen us in Him. Who's Him? Jesus. Before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Folks, we, uh, God thought it, number one. God thought it. Uh, verse 7, uh, no, excuse me, verse 3, it, said, it says that we were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. This salvation and this Jesus coming to be born in a manger, it's God's idea. He thought it. It's His plan. It's all His plan for you to be saved, for the world to be saved. Then God not only thought it, but God chose us. Verse 4, 
The Bible says that according to according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world. And then Jesus bought it. Look at verse 6. It says, To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved. Who's the beloved? Jesus. We're only accepted in the beloved. So we got God, bought it. We got Jesus, bought it. And praise God, verse 13 says, The Spirit wrought it. Look at this. And in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of the inheritance. That's the down payment of heaven. Uh, until The earnest is down payment until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Folks, God thought it, Jesus bought it, and the Spirit wrought it. So the saving ministry is in the Trinity. We hadn't sung this song. I don't even know if it's in the song book. When I was a Southern Baptist, we sang it so much I got tired of it. But there's a song called The Doxology. Is it in the book, brother? We're going to sing it in just a minute because it magnifies God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. My old Southern Baptist book, it was number, page number one. Matter of fact, I think it was on the cover, inside cover. We couldn't get away from it. And I thought it was the most boring, formal song I've ever heard. But I want to tell you something, folks. It was, it's a psalm that magnifies the Trinity. Now back to our text in closing. Why, what should be your response for Christmas? I'll tell you what should be your response. The same thing that Mary responded. She gave her body, verse 38. She said, I'm a handmaiden. I'm a servant. I'm a vessel. I don't understand this. I hadn't been with a man. I don't know how this could be possible. I don't have much to offer. But God, according to your word, if you say I'm the vessel that's going to bring and manifest God to this world, have at it. I'm yours. She gave her body. And then praise God. I know this is why she's not uh, the head of the Catholic Church. And she said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. You'll never say. When I was in Peru, I saw that big picture of Mary over a casket of Jesus. I mean, it was it was long, long mannequin in a glass casket in a Catholic church. I think they since then moved it to the cemetery, right, Miss Connie? I think they moved out to the cemetery. And you look at it, and there's Jesus, and there's this immaculate picture, twelve feet high, with halos and glowing out out of her head, and it's Mary looking over Jesus. Went to the monastery and there was a picture of Mary healing Jesus. I wanted to cry out blasphemy. Mary's not God. Mary's not the mediator. There's only one mediator between us and God. And folks, Mary just said, I magnify the Lord. He's Lord. But I want you to look at the next thing. She not only gave her body, she not only gave her soul, but praise God, she gave her spirit. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my who? Savior. She got saved just like any other sinner. Mary presented her body, presented her soul, and presented her spirit to God. Now how are we going to incarnate Jesus? How are we going to get Jesus into this world? I'll tell you how. The love of God perfects His love through us. The love of God is manifested through us. And folks, I want to tell you something. The Bible says that in Colossians chapter 1 verse 23 that the hope of glory is Christ in us. We can glorify God by just letting Him be who He is through us. Yield all we have to Him. And not just to Him, but God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank You. Thank You, Lord, for this message. It's been brief, but Lord, I hope it's been so thorough that some people will go home and just have to meditate on it. and Think about this Trinity in God creation, the Trinity, oh God, in the composition of the Bible, the Trinity uh, in the conception of Christ, the Trinity in the commissioning of the church, and the Trinity in the saving of our soul. Father, I'm glad that you're my Father, and I'm glad the Son of God lives in me, and I'm glad the Holy Spirit lives in me, and I'm glad you live in me, and Lord, I'm trice saved saved, saved. Glory to God, I can't get any more saved. And I'll never get unsaved because I'm sealed by the Spirit, kept by the Father, and the blood of Jesus 
the devil can't rob. And I thank God for salvation through the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Lord, please help those cults up the road and all over the roads of this country that don't believe that you are God and that in this Christmas season they don't even acknowledge it because they don't believe that Jesus came. God came to this earth and manifested himself through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And they're lost. And they're more faithful than we are to knock on doors and publish their little watchtower stuff and all their propaganda. And they're faithful to give their lives to, in the name of jihad and kill people, but they're God. But God help us to love people and to love you as you love people and be filled with your spirit. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.